Hey, 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 all you mentees, this is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition, and join me today for an overview of Batman No Man's Land Omnibus Volume 1 from DC Comics. So, let's get this started. And welcome back, everybody. So, it's finally here, at least my copy. I know it's been out for over a week, or actually a couple weeks now, but my copy was stuck at the post office just 30 minutes from my house for two weeks. But here it finally is. Batman No Man's Land Omnibus Volume 1, a book that was originally supposed to come out late last year, but it managed to actually come out here in January. So what we're looking at here is the cover by Dale Eaglesham. Uh, you have the DC logo up here, Batman No Man's Land Omnibus Volume 1. I love this scene right here. This is one of my favorite issues where Batman's like, all right, let's get the gang back together again. Here is your spine, Batman No Man's Land Omnibus Volume 1. And here it is right next to Batman Road to No Man's Land. I love the font. I love the Road to No Man's Land, No Man's Land, Omnibus, Omnibus Volume 1. Love it. Uh, the only thing I wish they had done was use the same dust jacket quality that they used in this one here. This one has a glossy finish to it, whereas this one just doesn't have a glossy finish. It's just a flat finish to it. But I think they look great together on the bookshelf. That is a good spine on both of these. And then the back of the book. You are now leaving the United States and entering no man's land. I can't wait to talk about this. Uh, let's look at it under the dust jacket. So under the dust jacket are just images of Gotham's buildings just collapsing. So I'm going to be talking about where this takes place in the Batman chronological reading order. Of course, it's pretty easy to guess that it takes place right after Road to No Man's Land. But I'm going to talk about another story that I think sets it up that hasn't been collected in omnibus format. So let's take a look at the artwork and talk about the premise of this volume one. All right, let's get this book opened. Here is your end paper. No Man's Land omnibus volume one with the shadow right there. The table of contents telling you what page you're going to find each of these stories. And what they do here is they break down who the cover artist is for each of these stories and including the name of the issues, like what the issue is called. Like Catwoman 72, 73, and 74, and they tell you the title of the issues. The biggest thing I think that is included in here that I'm so happy to see is this Harley Quinn volume, or issue number one, it's the one shot. So the first thing I wanna do is talk about No Man's Land. What exactly are we talking about? Because we've had an omnibus called Road to No Man's Land. And previously what has happened is there was a giant earthquake and then the citizens of Gotham had to live in the rubbles of this giant earthquake that struck in Gotham City. Uh, it turned out that this was all because of something that actually started in the pages of a storyline called Contagion. So Contagion led into Legacy and then Legacy eventually led into Cataclysm and Cataclysm became Road to No Man's Land. So... Um, I wouldn't be too surprised if we don't get a Contagion Legacy Omnibus because all of that, oh, that would be so awesome. All of that leads into these stories. So during the end of Road to No Man's Land and the beginning of this Omnibus, it's been about three months. Bruce Wayne slash Batman has decided to leave Gotham. He's given up on the people of Gotham because he see them just destroying themselves. He sees no hope. He's left, God, like he gave up on Gotham City for three months he's been missing. So what does that mean for the citizens of Gotham? Well, they have to live in this no man's land, meaning the United States of America has made it illegal for anybody to go in and out of Gotham City. So they're stuck there. They're stuck there to try to figure this out on their own. Um, and of course, we have a lot of Batman's arch nemesis that have taken sectors of the uh, city of Gotham. So there's an awesome spot. And actually, there's maps in this particular uh, collection. So here's the map I was talking about. You have different sectors of the city of Gotham. Here's the river right there that's kind of secluding the rest of the United States from Gotham City. But each sector and each territory is now being controlled by different um, arch nemesis from Batman's rogue gallery. And there is some hope because the Gotham Police Department has taken over some territories... So, but most of these are just the villains and then the citizens themselves trying to take over different sections of Gotham City. There is hope, though, towards uh, this one shot that maybe the Cape Crusader could be coming back. 
Even per, like, Commissioner Gordon has just given up on the idea of Batman. Like, he gets pissed off that somebody turns on the bat signal. It's like, no, he gave up on us. He's gone. Screw him. We don't need him. We're going to survive on our own. Well, there is some hope because we have the silhouette of a cape crusader on top of a building. However, it's not Batman. It's not Bruce Wayne. But we are introduced to this character, this brand new character named Batgirl. Now, I'm not going to go into spoilers because I, as much as I want to talk about this, um, this isn't what it seems to be, though. This isn't... The character that... How do I put this without spoiling it? You know what? No. I'm just gonna not talk about it. We are introduced to this character of Batgirl. It could uh, be the same character that you read about throughout the entire omnibus. Or there could be two different Batgirls. They could have uh, a different identity. But oh my gosh. Uh, the Batgirl that does appear in here is my favorite Batgirl. And I'm not gonna spoil who shows up in here. Now, of course... Batman does eventually come back to Gotham. This is his city, and he wants to take it back. But he's going to have to earn the trust of everybody. I mean, he ditched everybody. Not just Commissioner Gordon, but Oracle, Nightwing, Robin. He ditched everybody and left. And where has he been? So, Asriel gets involved in this. I love that they included all of this. And speaking of including, this omnibus collects Legends of the Dark Knight 116 to 121. Azrael, Agent of the Bat, 51 through 57. Batman, 563 to 568. Shadow of the Bat, 83 to 88. Detective Comics, 730 to 735. Catwoman, 72 to 74. Robin, 67. Batman Chronicles, 16 through 17. Nightwing, 35 through 37. Batman No Man's Land, number one. That's the one shot that kicked it all off up here. And Justice League, number 32. Young Justice No Man's Land, number one. And... The inclusion of Batman Harley Quinn one-shot. So you have the talents in here of Greg Rucka, Chuck Dixon, Devin Grayson, uh, Kelly Puckett, and uh, Dennis O'Neill, who's still writing the pages of Azrael. There is a lot of Greg Rucka here. And actually, who kicks it all off, believe it or not, is this gentleman right here, Bob Gell, who is the writer of Back to the Future. He's written uh, Spider-Man comics. He was part of that brain trust during Brand New Day. You have the artwork in here of Dale Eaglesham, uh, Alex Maleev, Damian Scott, uh, Bill Sienkiewicz, Jason Pearson, Dan Jurgens. Oh, the Herald story is so good. So Harold's the guy that builds things for Batman, and he's been missing for a while. And it's just a short little story that he sees the entirety of Gotham City destroyed. And his job is to fix it and put things back together again. But I love this. I love this idea. I love the idea of Gotham turning into a no man's land. This story right here, and I know I can't talk about each story, but I do have to talk about this particular story. Oh, wait, damn it. There is another story here too. This story right here, Home Sweet Home, it's just about an older gentleman that was a war veteran that has taken shelter in his own home and he's not giving it up to no matter what gangs go in there, whether it's Zaz or the Joker. And he's kind of like last man standing. He, he will stand there with his guns, not giving up his freedom. I thought that was a really cool take on a character. Not really an important citizen of Gotham, but I thought that was cool that it was in, included in here. But this story right here really got me. Because this is a story of Superman coming in and saying, Bruce, why haven't you fixed this, man? You've been here for a while. You've been back. How have you not fixed this? Well, <laughs> Batman just lets Superman, you know, help. And he tries to help the citizens of Gotham. He tries to feed them, give them water. And it goes back to square one of territories, of people just claiming, selling things and flipping it for their own benefits. And Batman, you know, at the very end, he tells Superman that, you know, they're not ready. They're not ready to be saved yet. And I thought that was such a powerful moment when Superman admits it. Like, he sees the defeat, like, right here. The citizens wanting to be ruled. And he goes and admits it to Batman that he was like, you were right. I didn't understand at the time, you know? They're not ready. And Batman's like, yeah, it took me a little bit longer than you to figure that out. And I thought that was such a powerful moment. And you do have more Batgirl, but the reunion of all the characters again, like I said, that's part of the cover on the dust jacket. Uh, there's this dude right here, the death dancer through the pages of Asriel. But yeah, Mike Del Tato steps in as artist to have this reunion. 
There's a really powerful story with Two-Face and Rene Montoya. And if you're a fan of Gotham's, uh, the uh, Gotham Police, uh, Go I'm sorry, Gotham Central, that story, this is where that relationship started that they talk a little bit about in the pages of Gotham Central. But this reunion right here when Batman's like, send the signal, get them all back here, I'm going to need their help. And then he starts to just strategically place each of his Bat family in different places. So I thought that was a really cool way of getting the Bat family to where they were. And he sends, like, for example, uh, Nightwing to, to take over Blackgate again, which is that prison that's been taken over by a bunch of inmates. Uh, he sends Azrael to go do his own thing in another part of Gotham. This right here, drawn by the phenomenal Scott McDaniel. I love this story arc. It's only three issues, uh, written by Chuck Dixon. It, it's a great story, and, you know, it, this has been collected before in the trade paperback format of Nightwing. Then we have so... Then we have this Poison Ivy story here towards the back. There's the Huntress, who plays a big role in all of this. And this one is uh, drawn by Dan Jurgens and inked by Bill Sienkiewicz. I want to say Greg Rucka is... Yeah, Greg Rucka wrote a big majority of this book. Now, the only thing that's missing that I noticed from this book... You know, you got the page numbers. I love that. You have the table of contents. But there are no credits for the writers and artists. They're not anywhere to be found until you look inside of the book. Like, if you look in the issue, it will tell you who the artists are. It will tell you who the writer is. So, for example, you have Bob Gale, Alex Maleev. And if you go to another issue, this is Jason Pearson. But you have Greg Rucka writing it, Jason Pearson and Cam Smith are the artists. The only book that that fails in, though, is because I don't think they thought ahead on, on this. And that is this book right here. The Harley Quinn one-shot. Because when this was published, it had a hardback. It wasn't a hardcover, but it was one of those like cardboard covers that they had, like uh, prestige format almost. But the credits were on the inside of the cover, so they were on the opposite page of this. And that's why you're not going to see the credits in this. But I love that they included this. This is for the very first time included in a collection. This has never been previously collected in any of the trade paperbacks of No Man's Land. And there have been two versions of those. So I think the original one was five trade paperbacks, missing some stories. Then they did a fuller collection of four tr thicker trade paperbacks. But they still missed out on this particular story, so I'm so glad to see it included in here. Otherwise, Harley Quinn just appears. Because, yes, she is a character that originated in the animated series, but, by the way, this is written by Paul Dini. Uh, but this was the one-shot that introduced her into the DC Comics line. So I always thought it was weird... That just in the pages of No Man's Land, she's there with the Joker. And I'm like, wait a minute. They didn't do a proper introduction? No, they did. It was just never collected. And this is the Jim Ballant issues of Catwoman back here. These are the ones that are written by John Ostrander of Suicide Squad fame. Not a lot of extras, I will say. The book retails for $125 and has 1,136 pages. And as far as the extras, here, let's get to this. Oh, there's the Larry Hama story back here with Mr. Freeze. Yeah, I can't talk about each issue, but there's a lot of talent that went into this book. So here are the uh, the extras. It's just the, the pinups, pretty much, by a different artist. And all the way in the back is something I love to see to be continued in Batman No Man's Land Omnibus Volume 2. Now, when I do an overview of that whenever it comes out, we don't have a date yet. Um, I'll probably be talking more about this character because I love this character so much. She, to me, is my Batgirl. And Barbara Gordon will always be my Oracle. Now, let's talk about this binding because that is a question I've been asked by a lot of my viewers. What the story is with the binding in this particular omnibus. Like I mentioned, it has 1136 pages. It is sewn binding. Not that big of an eye, and honestly, it laid over pretty good. Like, I did, you know, a proper omnibus opening. This is, of course, the very first issue. It's not, how do I put it, it's not tight. Like, there is some glue around uh, the ribbon down here that would normally keep it closing it. But after a few openings of this book, I did, I think, three times I did the proper opening of it. And it's holding together really nice. It's laying over well. Here's what the spread pages look like. And honestly, it's laying over really nice. Very minimal gutter loss. 
And that's toward, I mean, that is the first issue. Here's one a little closer to the middle, right there, with the Young Justice one-shot. And then, I don't think there's any spread pages, but just taking really a look at how it lays over towards the end of the book. But that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They pride themselves on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in an excellent condition as well as prompt and helpful service. Check out the bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. CGN is excited to announce that they are now taking pre-orders. They're making it easier for you to ensure that you don't miss out on the hottest releases. CGN is currently running a special promotion for your mentees. If you're a first time customer, let them know that you were referred by near mint condition at the checkout and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. This promotion is valid for U.S. customers only. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with a kind of deep discount and quality shipping and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this omnibus. Let me know in the comments down below if you are picking this up, if you were happy that this actually has the Harley Quinn one-shot that introduces her to the DC Comics mainline, if you have the trade paperbacks and you're happy with those, or if you've never read these stories, and this is your first time going in completely blind. If you have any more questions, leave your questions down below. Don't forget to smash that like button, ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. We are on Spreadshop and on Patreon, amazing ways to support the channel, if you can do so. And more importantly, all of you stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.